I'd like to continue with the short intro to analyzing political systems that I made last week by giving my answer to one of the most common questions anarchists receive. Anarchists envision a society where there are no oppressive systems at all, and people are free to do more or less what they want. Whenever an anarchist questions the existence of an institution or a system, someone else is likely to respond with, well, what would you replace it with? Unfortunately, it's not a simple question, and I need a whole video to answer it. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. This video is sponsored by Google Play and the newest generic hack and slash mobile game. I don't know why Google Play needs to advertise since it's the Android App Store, but they're paying people to say it, so get your apps from Google, like you already do. Also, get the new Google Phone. Ooh, and the new Google Headphones. Also, get the new Google VR Headset. Ooh, and maybe get the new Google Listener for spying on your neighbors. Also, do you know about how Google owns everything now, so all ads are for Google? Back to the question, what would you replace it with? It's a perfectly reasonable question. In fact, it's a crucial question. Just not yet. It's jumping the gun. All my answers would sound like I was avoiding the question. A direct answer could be considered ridiculously naive and proof that anarchism is not a serious philosophy. Some people even ask that question as a tactic to discredit us. The problem is, people are used to living with oppressive systems and used to believing what those systems say about themselves, like that they're necessary. You need to know why these systems are the problem before you understand the solutions, because solutions should flow logically from the nature of the problem. That's why last week I finished the video by saying understanding these systems is paramount. If you understand them well enough, you might get some idea of the answer of what would replace them. You might come to see political systems as violent and oppressive and divisive and fundamentally opposed to your values. You might not, of course, but that's where study has led me, at least. But I also needed to know eliminating these systems was possible, or else I would probably have fallen into despair by now. We're used to everything being done either by government or business. So when you propose something different, a million people tell you that's impossible. Because things can only get done by government or business. The unspoken assumption is the only incentives to do anything are force and money, which is patently untrue, as every day we see people volunteer to do things they consider more important than their jobs. But our brains are still trapped in the culture we come from, and all its assumptions about the way the world works. As such, most people still don't know doing away with these systems is possible. Not many people know about the anthropology of stateless, egalitarian societies, historically and in the present. Wherever you find oppression, you find resistance. And even today, there are societies consciously organized to avoid being conquered by nearby states or, develop, uh, or, or to avoid developing an internal hierarchy of any kind. You can read about them to see how they've answered these questions. If you understand why so many people around the world resist oppression and how they resist, the answers will come to you. Of course, you might think it could work for them, but never here. Doing pretty much anything looks daunting if the modern world is your starting point. We can't even protect fragile ecosystems without police breaking out the tear gas. But anything is possible if enough people work together. The philosophy of anarchism helps you understand not only how the system works, but just as importantly, that freedom is an option and that it's desirable for us. It's a theory derived from a long history of resistance to oppression in all its forms, so it's not just about some distant future where everyone's free, but it's also intensely interested in how we get there. 
It's about the long road to liberation, a road full of resistance to the current system, a road we have a bunch of maps to, but we've never actually gone down. One key feature of anarchism is the harmony of ends and means. So if we want freedom from social hierarchy, we don't get it by bolstering authority or establishing a new hierarchy, but by practices that flatten hierarchies. Because what anarchy would look like depends on how we get there. It might be interesting to imagine how things would change if all oppressive systems vanished today, presumably because you collected all the infinity stones and did this. In fact, who wants to write a book with me? <laughs> but it's simply not an option to eliminate oppressive systems by snapping your fingers. So what the world would be like today if they were gone couldn't possibly reflect what the future will look like. We don't know how long reaching a stateless, borderless world will take. We don't know what will happen to the environment over that time. We don't know what new technology will come out in that time. We just don't know. I've made a video about envisioning the future you can watch, so I won't go into it now. People are so used to one or two ways of living, they don't realize the huge array of possibilities life offers. As a result, they only work on reforming existing institutions. But what if the institution itself was the problem? What if school holds back our learning? What if government doesn't make us free? What if work is what keeps us poor? I often get told not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but oppressive systems are all bathwater. Some people would say these institutions can be reformed to the point that they fulfill their promises, even though they never have, and we should just continue to vote and have faith. Yet, many of the same people would instantly shoot down any alternative proposals. People are quick to dismiss things we don't understand. It's part of confirmation bias. One way around it is to give people a second source. Like, you know, maybe they've heard it from you, but they don't really buy it. But maybe if they heard it from me or someone more articulate, they'd be more inclined to listen. Anyway, it's quite common to prefer the devil you know to the devil you don't. But I think if more people understood these systems at the fundamental level and, and were empowered to resist them, they would resist. I studied social institutions like politics and culture and the economy for years until I ever learned to question their existence. But when I did, replace it with nothing became a pretty good rule of thumb. Not that it applies to everything. I personally wouldn't choose to get rid of hospitals, although maybe healthcare workers in a free society would organize things differently. I don't know. It will be up to them, the people who know what they're doing, not me, the philosopher king, sitting on my throne telling them what to do. I just like to bear in mind, we don't have to limit our thinking to reforming or just learning to live with these things. The first thing I thought of replacing with nothing was the war on drugs. Even before I believed in abolition of lots more things, I knew the war on drugs was bullshit. I think everybody knows by now. But the question of full legalization is hardly ever broached. Everywhere they're considering legalization, the question is always something like, um, how much should the government restrict the consumption of drugs among adults and the licensing of legal vendors? And how high should the tax on it be? And that's because the state dominates the discourse. It would never even consider the option of no restrictions on buying and selling drugs to adults, or even better, distributing them for free, because then it would be giving up a measure of its power. And people don't like to do that. Once the state has made something a legal question, it's brought that area of life under its control. And you might have noticed it does that with everything. There was never any doubt, for, for example, that the government would tax and regulate Bitcoin. 
Now it has control over drugs, so it'll only give that up in pieces, very gradually accepting the legalization of ever more scary drugs, like now how magic mushrooms are becoming decriminalized, but we'll have to wait another 20 years before DMT is. And the state's always retaining a measure of control in the form of laws and taxes. So what would I replace the war on drugs with? Nothing. When I started reading more about anarchism, I realized I could apply the replace it with nothing rule to a lot more things. Many social institutions hold back our ability to do what the institution promises. As a teacher, the clearest example to me is school. I've made a whole series on school, which is pretty much the worst way to learn, and how we could do so much better, and you can see it up here. Um, and all these videos have links in the description anyway. Uh, but to summarize, I think we could get rid of school and replace it with nothing. Because then students could direct their own learning, learn to be independent, and probably learn a hell of a lot more than if they had been in school. There's been some awareness raised over the past couple of years about the option of abolishing the police. As I've said a bunch of times on this channel, the police are part of a much bigger system, and if you just sort of vote to get rid of them on paper or reduce their budgets slightly, which by the way was the bare minimum demanded of the 2020 uprising, and even that hasn't been realized, you're still not really tackling the system as a whole. But it's still worth trying to abolish the police, because only then can people actually defend themselves. And that's what would inevitably happen in the absence of police. Now, obviously, what we've been brought up to believe is that that would mean everyone would just start shooting each other. But what usually happens in such situations, especially if the removal of police was a result of grassroots activism, is people organize to protect each other as neighborhoods and communities. There's plenty of theory and practice you can read if it sounds like it might be a worthwhile goal to you. So abolish police and replace them with nothing, and the people will figure out the best ways to keep each other safe. Same goes with all aspects of the legal system. We have congresses and parliaments and cabinets making laws over us and spending our money. Well, who says we need so-called representatives to make decisions for us? Most of the decisions made in parliament could have been made by individuals for themselves. The others could be made in groups by people who are actually affected by them. What would I replace the rule of law with? Nothing. Then people would once again have the chance to govern themselves. Norms and consensus would override what authority says, as they often do already. But Chris, I hear some of you ask, without the law, how would we force people to do what we think they should do? That's the neat thing. You don't. I would also gladly eliminate borders. In fact, even before I knew about the war on drugs, I was skeptical of borders. I see no justification for preventing people moving around the earth. Most excuses for borders are based on a kind of unacknowledged racism toward everyone who isn't from within those borders. A feeling of superiority that comes with either being born in this country, or having been vetted by people in the government. Like all these topics, I've made videos on it, so don't let my brief and superficial treatment of any topic turn you off learning more. They used to ask the question of what to replace slavery with. After all, slavery produced a lot of what we have, a lot of wealth, still does, in fact. Who would do all that work? How would former slave owners get by? But these questions were moot, because slavery itself was the problem. Ending it was the priority. What would I replace slavery with? How about just free association? Letting formerly enslaved people go where they want and do what they want. People have minds of their own. You don't have to instruct them to be free. You don't have to give them a plan. You just have to move out of their way. You can apply some of these rules to any social institution, at least to consider uh, anything we take for granted, 
Learn about it, observe it, think about what it actually does. Not what it says it does, but its actual processes and their outcomes. And then ask, do we need this? And if so, couldn't it be done by free people? Free associations of producers can make anything we need. Moreover, in a system without profit, there'd be no incentive to keep the results of research secret. So instead of working in isolated organizations, there'd be no more artificial barriers to cooperation. Information and expertise would be available to anyone. There would be experts in every field, like today, but no one would force you to obey them. Recently, as a kind of gotcha, some people on Twitter asked, how would glasses get made in anarchy? I don't know. I don't know how they get made now. I don't need to know, because other people know, and they will teach new generations of opticians and optometrists, I'm not exactly sure the difference, don't worry about it, uh, passing down useful knowledge like any complex society. I don't have all the answers, and I don't have to. We have enough of them as a group to solve most of our problems. Likewise, any question about how an anarchic society would deal with a current problem is going to be so hypothetical, there are going to be all kinds of possible answers. That's a good thing. It means we'll have options, rather than just whatever works best for the people in power. The difference between anarchism and almost every other philosophy you can name is anarchy doesn't require a few people to know everything and tell people what to do. Likewise, any concerned locals can get involved in community defense or care or some other way to reduce violence, and they'll have time, because they won't be forced to work 12 hours a day anymore. All adults can participate in local governance, They'll work with other free people all around the world, and they'll figure things out for themselves. In all the examples I've presented, imagining the future doesn't require everyone to know exactly how something will get done in the absence of coercion. But it does require realizing we don't need to be coerced for something to get done. It requires us to stop wanting to force people into our ways of thinking and living and punish them for deviating. For some people, this change of mindset is the hardest part of learning to be free. Replace the cops, judges, and parents in your head with nothing, too. Then your mind will be free to explore the possibilities life offers.